Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I'm a law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Um, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the Senior Center, which we've been doing now for about 12 or 13 years, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Hudson, that means they want to stay right here. They don't want to move to Marlboro or to San Diego or to any place else. They want to stay home. And so the goal of the show is to help um, you understand, if you're like Frank and Mary, how you can just stay in your house just forever and stay here in Hudson. So I've got this great co-host, John Parent, whom everybody knows John because he's been a selectman now for a long time. I want to say six years, <laughs> six yeah. years uh, to find these great guests to, to bring on just to kind of talk about issues that may be relevant to you. And John, I think we have a we have a, a, a terrific guest today that you found and, you know, an appropriate. It's December. This might be really relevant information for folks. Who have we got? Very good. Thank you very much, Arthur. Um, before I introduce Joanne, let, let me just mention that the assessor's department itself uh, it is really a vital function uh, for the town of Hudson. You know, 64% of our revenue comes from real taxes, real and personal property taxes. Uh, so we really need to have a very accurate, um, uh, they, they play an extremely important role in make, making sure uh, that the taxes are accurate and that, and that the values are accurate. Uh, and next week, um, Joanne and her crew will be given a presentation on what they found uh, with the values uh, to the Board of Selectmen on Monday night. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, Joanne McIntyre has been with the assessor's office since 1993. Uh, so we can be pretty much assured uh, that she knows what she's talking about. So with that, um, I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Arthur. Uh, and maybe just to get Joanne going, you can give her a couple of uh, questions. Sure. And, and Joanne, thank you very much for doing this. And, and as I mentioned, you know, before before the show, one of the purposes of this show is just so that especially seniors who are, you know, nervous about maybe calling or having a question about these things can just kind of put a face to a to a position, you know. And so I think this is really helpful. So one of the things we had talked about, you know, before we, we, we were before the show was, can you just talk a little bit about how the assessment actually gets figured out every year. You know, people get this bill and it's got a, you know, a calculation, you know, of the, of, of a tax and a rate and stuff, but it's always based on an assessment and it changes over time. Can you just talk about that? And then, and then, and then once we've done that, we can kind of talk about some, you know, abatements that may be, you know, that, that some seniors may be eligible for and some other stuff. Go in. Okay. So, in order to, you know, we have to get your value. So the value is um, based on the market. So, but it's not based on the market today. It's based basically a year and a half ago. So we're always in the past. We only, we only value for tax purposes only. Um, and there, there's a lot that goes into it. It has to be, you know, comparable houses, you know, like um, capes being compared to capes, condos with condos. Um, colonials with colonials. You can't like compare a colonial house with a ranch. They, they just don't jive. And some years, um, contemporary houses are super high and then ranches could be really low or, you know, a raised ranch, they, they could be the one trending, trending on the market. It, it just goes by how the market is. So the values depend on the kind of valuables, values of the comparable houses, houses comparable to yeah. yours, and they move around, they can just move around every year and not necessarily yeah. exactly the same, you're saying. So it's really. Yeah. So it's, so it's, so it's really kind of a constant readjustment. And, and, it, and if, if somebody were saying to themselves, well, how does she know what's in my house? You know, it, it, is, it, is there, is this based on on any kind of you know data that you have regarding these houses and 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 if somebody wanted to 
can change that? How would they change it? So it, it's based on square footage, um, yeah. the square footage of your house, the number of bathrooms add into it. If you have a fireplace that adds into it um, and yet Leanne also adds into it. So one person could have a 15,000 square foot lot. Another one could have two acres. So that that has a lot that goes into it. Um, and, and, and if and if I had a if I had a question about about how you're figuring my taxes out, or if I wanted to say, gee, it doesn't seem like that value is right, what what would I what would I do? So you would call the assessor's office. Um, you would talk to me, or anybody else in the office. But unfortunately, right now it's just me. Thank you. Um, so you would call. You I you could make an appointment. I could go out and check your property out. Um, do a walkthrough, but with COVID right now, I, I'm a little, you know, people are leery. They don't <clears> want <throat> me walking through the house, and I don't want to walk through there. Right. So, um, so we would, you know, go over their field card, make sure that everything is correct on there. Um, and then they would file for an abatement and that yeah. you file for an abatement in January. So you have from when the actual tax bills are sent out the end of December till February 1st. Okay, All right, let, let me ask Joanna a, a question here too. Um, I'm not sure that everybody is aware that if you go under the Hudson, the town of Hudson website, and then you go under the assessor's office, if they yep. click on online assessments, they can bring up their property and it will Absolutely. tell them exactly what that assessment is based on. In other words, it's yes. going to show the number of rooms, the square footage, number of fireplaces, uh, and all of that good stuff. And that's readily available public information. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to mention is we, we talk about fluctuating values. Uh, I think there's one circumstance where the value is going to be pretty much set, and that comes to a brand new sale. So a house may have been valued, uh, at, at, let's say $400,000 a couple of years ago. Now they go out and they sell that home in today's market for $600,000 versus the 400 from a couple of years ago. Doesn't that 600,000 then become the market value and wouldn't the taxes be based on that new figure? Yes, but it wouldn't. So we don't assess like if you sell your house for the six hundred thousand. Yeah, we're not going to automatically assess it for the six hundred thousand because we have to go by all the comparable homes. Okay. That so if you were in an area that did not have that many sales and the majority of them were valued well below the six hundred yeah. grand you would not necessarily get hit with the 600,000 valuation. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. See, I thought that was an automatic thing. All right. Yeah. No, go by, by what you, a specific home sells for. It, it's all the comparable homes. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. That's it. I didn't know that either. That's a, That's interesting. Yeah. Because if we did that, that would be spot assessing. And that's that's illegal. So we we'll all right. But if you talk, let, not not to belabor it, but now you've got my curiosity out. If <laughs> see, he's like me. I, 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 I mean, it, it right. is in fact market value is willing buyer willing seller. So yep. it, if it's willing buyer willing seller and it's six hundred grand, why would that not be? the market value because there's other homes so all right the, 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 there's other homes that you know mm -hmm. so if it was a colonial so other colonials could go for four hundred thousand okay. some could go higher at like eight hundred thousand it 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 just it's just not based on one home okay. and I suppose this is a good way to make sure that the buyer and the seller are not trying to manipulate the market by by kind of 
okay. but going on the, on the other side and you know mark you know valuing their thing the deal lower just so that they can get a lower assessment that's that's a really that's great that 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 check and balance is in there that is a good check yeah yeah i didn't think of it from that aspect yeah very good okay are the okay. other, other no, i was just going to say and joanne you were you were just mentioning that if they were trying to file for that particular kind of abatement an abatement that's really based on they're saying that they think that the house was valued obviously too, for too much, right? Yeah. Then they have a given amount of time from the day they actually get their tax bill, but they haven't got their tax bill yet, right? So they're, yeah. when, so the, so the, so the, so that this isn't based on the, the, those earlier bills that they got, because those were all. Those are preliminary bills. So the those, first bills, your August and November bills, they're right. estimated. I get it. And, and so and so there and so the bill that they need to be looking at you're saying is a bill that will actually come out in in December yes because that's when we have the tax rate set that's when we have all the new values set and yeah okay by the way this is it's a big deal for us over in Marlboro because there, you know the Marlboro there had always been a certain sense of elitism you know because I live in Marlboro oh our values are always higher than Hudson's but but suddenly I'm told that over the last several years that's flipped and now Hudson Hudson values are higher because yeah. of that, because of your Main Street because of your great <laughs> among other things you know because of the Main Street right yeah. so it's, yeah. it's it's a wonderful incentive to the local officials here like oh we gotta be we can do better than that you know it's, yeah yeah it's, it's kind of a constant so so can we talk a little bit now about if you know if I'm a senior. Mm -hmm. And I'm really wanting to stay in my home. You know, that's my goal. I want to stay in my home. And I'm just trying to figure out, and, and I know from my, myself, you know, from doing this kind of work, so I deal with a lot of seniors. And for them, often, you know, the tax bill is the second biggest bill next to their food. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal, right? And, 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 so if, and so if they're wanting to stay home, can you just talk about what kind of you know, potential remedies they may have, you know, what kinds of abatements there are available. And then could, could you spend a few minutes, you know, talking about the so-called tax, you know, the, the tax deferral program? Okay, so there are exemptions in place. So we have a widow's exemption. That one, you can't have more than $40,000 worth of assets. And it's $175 off your taxes. Right, and that's not, and that, but that's that, that's not more than forty. Not counting the house. Not no, you're house. included. Right. Yeah. Um. There's the over seventy exemption. So for married people, you can't make more than um, thirty thousand dollars a year, and you can't have more than thirty thousand dollars in assets. Um. That's combined for a married couple. Um. Mm -hmm. For a single, you can't make more than. 20, is it 20,000, $20,000 a year. And you can't have more than $28,000 in assets. So that, that includes money in the bank, CDs, stocks, IRAs, all that. Yeah. And if you qualify for one of those, what is, what is the, uh, what is the abatement? It's $500 off your taxes. I see. Um, let me see. There's veterans. There's all sorts of veterans. So if you're below a hundred percent, disabled, um, you can get $400 off your taxes. If you are 100% disabled, it's um, $1,000. And then there are, there are other ones. If, if you're paraplegic, you're fully exempt from taxes. Oh, I see. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then there's a hardship clause, um, clause 18, and that the board votes on. Um, so you have to be aged and firm and what's that word? I can't, I can never remember the word. Um, you, you can't have a lot of money. So right. that one, yeah, I'll that one. Degenerate. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you know, for, I, regarding, I'm just going to, I'm just at wondering regarding, so for just two questions regarding most of them. So there's actually a fixed dollar amount for the abatement. So it makes no difference what, what your taxes are. You, right. you just get a fixed amount that is off. And, and regarding the last one that you just talked about, right? Do, do, you, do you find people who, who, who do apply for that? Because once again, I'm, I'm thinking about, and, and, and from your experience, this is, this is a question for the whole board of assessors to vote on, right? Yes. And this is case by case. 
Can you just kind of talk about what, you know, you know, obviously you're not talking about particular, you know, you know, people, but, but about cases that, 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 the, that, the, that you've seen in the past with, where, where the board has been sympathetic to that kind of abatement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have a few of them that we, that we do. Um, and, and it, it all comes down to the money and, you know, and what they have and what they don't have and, and what's going on. It's, it is, it's really case by case. And that one, they do not have to pay the money back. Oh, that's good. That's good. Joanne, is there also a, I, I don't know if it's money off the taxes or if they in fact receive dollars, but I know there's a work program. There is. Maybe you can um, talk about that a little bit. The, Senior work program. Um, I don't have too much to do with that right. part. Um, I think seniors work a hundred hours, and it's like five hundred dollars off their taxes. I, I was going to say I thought it was five hundred dollars off the taxes, and I know for a fact that we do have uh, individuals that work in town hall uh, that would apply or qualify, you yep. know, for that. Okay, all right. And that's a that's a great program, also. You know. It, Except, except I would assume that, you know, obviously town hall is closed right now. So there might be a lot of bummed out people who yeah. can't, they can't yeah. put their work off this year, right? right? But, you know, the other thing, Joanne, that I, I'm not going to go into uh, great detail on it, but uh, there, there's a state program uh, as well through the uh, state of Massachusetts. Um, and, and it's a credit that you can receive on your Massachusetts taxes. Uh, I was a volunteer tax preparer for the uh, AARP program for five years uh, and worked out of the senior center uh, during tax time. And th that's something that I wanna make sure uh, that seniors are aware of. And without going into great detail on it, uh, you have to be at least 65, at least one person in the household uh, at 65. And then it's, it's a matter of the percentage of your income versus the amount of your taxes. Uh, so if your taxes exceed 10% of your income and you meet the other income and age qualifications, you can get actually up to a thousand dollars a year, uh, as a credit, not an offset. So you, if you pay absolutely no taxes at all, um, you're eligible to get a check, you know, or a deposit for a thousand dollars. And that is possible for renters uh, as well. And they base that on 25% uh, of your income uh, with the same criteria. Uh, so that's another way that uh, if your income isn't that high uh, and you're paying, you know, a heavy amount in property tax, you can definitely, you can get a credit uh, on that. So just that, another... John, that's a great point. We we should probably we should probably look to do a show like right around you know like in maybe in March you know to to even kind of reemphasize that just to talk about taxes in general and maybe invite somebody like one like like you were one of those AARP volunteers right yeah, yeah. just talk that, about that that would be a great idea. I did both Marlboro and uh, and Hudson, and it, it's amazing the number of people that do. Uh, become aware of that. And of course, once they become aware of it, then they come in every year. Uh, right. And in general, uh, a lot of these folk uh, really don't have to file taxes at all because of, of their income. Um, but if they want to partake in this program, they have to file both uh, with the IRS and the state, and then they're eligible to get the dollars. So if they go through the AARP program, uh, that's completely uh, free, uh, strictly volunteer. So it's a good benefit. Uh, that's, a, that's a great idea. So, so I, Joanna, be, you know, be, be, I know we, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm in charge of watching the time, so I want to be focused on it. But could you spend a few minutes just talking about the tax deferral program? Because I think that many, many folks are just, you know, kind of unaware of that possibility, you know, and, and, and it can be, you know, I, once again, I've, I had a wonderful couple that lived in in uh, Hudson, and the husband was taking care of the wife, you know, and they were living on, you know, Social Security and stuff. 
<clears throat> and their goal they been living in the house for 50 years, you know, and, 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 and the notion and being able to, you know, look at a way of just being able to stay in their house was a big deal for them. So can you just talk about that a little bit. Okay. So the tax deferral. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, do they have a mortgage? You know, I mean, I have questions. So if they have a mortgage in order to do the tax referral, they have to get permission from the bank. From the bank. Right. Yeah. And so that, that automatically takes out most people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah. And um, so we can defer your taxes. So, and then once they either pass or they sell the home, um, if they don't pay it within a certain amount of time, the interest for all the years that they've deferred goes up to 18%. Whoa. It's, it's big. It's big. So, and I mean, and they can only defer up to, I'm pretty sure it's half the value of their home. So once they've done that, then they go on and um, they'll, they'll have to pay their taxes again. Right. right. Yeah. But, but that could be some right. substantial dollars. Yes. And, and, do you, and do you know what, I know that the state, state basically sets these kinds of minimum or minimum criteria and says, you know, you can, you can, you can set whatever rate you want below that, but that the state has a rate. If I recall correctly, the state rate was, is either 6% or 8%. But do you know, does, does Hudson have any special, you know, do they, do they charge less than, less than the required state number? Have they done anything to modify the state number? No. Mm. No, I think it's six. I want to say it's yeah. six. Yes, okay. but in, and 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 once again, if if folks are interested in just talking about that and trying to figure it out, they should be they should be talk, they should be talking to you in the assessor's office. Yeah, yeah, and again, that's a vote by the board, also. Right, right. But I just I just wanted to mention it, you know, because I realize for for many people, you know, they've had their houses all their lives. They just want to live in their house until they die. Mm -hmm. you know, certainly they want to leave something to their kids right. but I try to emphasize I try to emphasize to them you know this is when the house gets sold the taxes will get paid you know and 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 so you're not it's not like the town's going to take the house you know the no. house is going to get sold the taxes will get paid you know it's not like you, you know you're not giving anything to your children you know? right yeah. that's good that's well, good this has been really really useful this has been really useful. Any any other questions, John? Before we before we uh... no no, I just want to thank you, and I appreciate it very much. We'll oh, see you next week. Yeah, see you Monday. <laughs> That's right. You guys are setting you're you're setting the rate and doing all of that stuff. Yep. So so folks, you know the point of this show is to give you options, right? You know, so so Joanne is there. If you've got questions, just talk to her. I mean, you know, she's just, a, you know, she's been here forever. She knows all the rules. If you've got a question, she's not there. They're not, she's not there to keep you from getting your abatements. She's oh, there, no, she's not. there to help you get your abatements, right? Yeah. There you go. And, and John, I think this is just, this has just been really useful. I think it's really kind of one of the key purposes of the show. So thank you very much for convincing Joanne, who you said was, a, was very hesitant. <laughs> <laughs> coming on uh, to, to take your time to do this. So we really appreciate it. So, so thank you, Joanne. Thank you, John, for being willing to, yeah. to do this. Uh, and folks, I hope you hope you enjoyed this show. If you've got any, oh, go, Joanne, can you give a phone number that oh. people could call? Yeah, it's 998-568-9620. Great. So if you've got questions, she's the person you want to talk to. So, uh, folks, I hope you've enjoyed the show, um, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Stay safe. <laughs>